Jennifer Cohan is Delaware's Transportation Secretary. Secretary, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We want to talk about infrastructure as topic number one. I think a lot of people agree infrastructure is a big priority, but money always seems to be getting in the way of that. We couldn't get a gas tax passed. Um, state Democrats want to raise the DMV fee fees, but Republicans want to move the um, Del Dot operations out of the Transportation Trust Fund into the general fund. Uh, as a way to make up for the shortfall. What's your take on, first, moving that money out of the Transportation Trust Fund? Well, actually, we've been having conversations about that for, for years, and I think um, the process going forward is going to be a balanced solution. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to have to be something along those lines. It, it makes a ton of sense because the Transportation Trust Fund was originally conceived to do just capital projects. Mm -hmm. um, so I know um, both myself and the, the governor is also um, okay with having that conversation. The problem that we're running into currently is that the general fund revenue situation is uh, just as bad, if not worse, than the transportation trust fund revenue situation. So I think having those conversations are important. Um, I think the package that was put forth in the in House Bill um, 140 makes a lot of sense because if you actually look at the makeup of those DMV fees, mm -hmm. a lot of those fees are things that um, you actually either can finance, for example, the document fee. Um, when you buy a new vehicle or even a used vehicle, you can actually finance that. And we are actually the lowest cost state in the, our, all of our surrounding states, you know, even if we move forward with the increase at 4.25 or still, um, Maryland is at 5, Pennsylvania is at 6%, so still remaining competitive. Mm -hmm. And then the makeup of those other fees are things like late fees, um, you know, and, and temporary tags and things like that that you can actually avoid paying. So we really were very particular and careful on choosing those different revenues to make sure it wasn't going to impact, you know, the Delaware citizen extremely mm -hmm. hard. So you think those are common sense increases? Absolutely common sense increases to keep us still competitive and you know, and not have a huge impact at the citizen. Um, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the shutdown of I-495. Uh, are we 100% there on that bridge over the Christina River? We absolutely are. I'm happy to say we are 100% there. Out of that mini crisis came a phenomenal kind of uplift to see what we can actually do and how fast we can get things done and the, just the level of effort that went into making that right um, was just it was just a great thing to see and we've actually been winning awards on and crisis management on, on dealing with that. Does Delat have any more information on uh, that dirt pile, the 50,000 ton dirt pile that, that kind of triggered the whole thing? Um, where does that whole investigation stand? Well, we are actually um, working on litigation. Um, mm -hmm. There is several different parties that are involved in that, um, but we are pursuing that and we're looking to recoup some of those dollars. And where are we on that? Is it still just beginning in recouping? It's, we're just the in the beginning stages of um, working on liability. Okay. Um, so that mini crisis, as you called it, it, it triggered some other subsequent bridge inspections throughout the state. Where, where do our bridges stand in the state? Are, are we, do we need to be worried at all, or have you found some problems as a result of these inspections? No, and that's actually a really good question because no, actually we are doing phenomenally well with our bridge safety. We did go out and inspect the remaining bridge inventory. And what I think a lot of people don't understand is that um, bridges aren't just what you see as overpasses and things like 495. They can be anything that is over, over a pipe. Um, and we actually went out and we inspected all of those. The only thing that we do have a problem with in the in this state right now is the, uh, the corrugated metal pipes that are actually considered bridges. Um, and those were put in place in the 80s and they were in the metal um, that was used in those pipes is deteriorating and they're actually coming to the end of life. Mm -hmm. So replacing those is going to be a big, big effort. Sometimes people don't understand that those are actually considered bridges, but we are focusing a lot of energy and time on, on that. And are there resources to make those replacements? There are limited resources, so we actually have to prioritize um, the ones that need the attention sooner rather than later. But it has to be a priority because when, once these pipes fail, um, they can actually create a serious, uh, you know, it could be a road collapse, it could be anything like that. So th we have to get to those sooner rather than later. Okay. Uh, rail safety, obviously a part of the infrastructure system in our state. Um, what's the relationship between Amtrak, those freight trains, um, and Del Dot? 
Well, actually, that is managed through our Department of Trans Transit, our Transit Corporation, and we actually have a really good relationship with, with Amtrak. I know there's a little bit of public concern about the amount of freight that's coming in um, via rail, um, but we are working closely with, uh, with Amtrak and, and even SEPT. I know, you know the recent tragedy with, with the Amtrak train. Um, you know, we're also working with the Northeast Corridor, which is focusing on trying to get additional resources to make sure that we have adequate non-congested rail travel. With all the freight traffic, a lot of times I'll be driving on the road and, and I'll just look to the side and I feel like I'm constantly seeing freight cars and they're not moving, but they're always there and they're always different. I mean, is there any schedule that Del Dot is aware of that they are traveling through the state? Well, and you know, that's another kind of thing that the general public doesn't necessarily always understand is that that stuff is coordinated to, you know, I always say the Nats eyelash. So absolutely, and unless there's an issue, um, that all, all of those time frames and, and deliveries and are all programmed out. Okay, now we've heard um, just from our news gathering that there are some concerns about those cars and if, if something should happen if they tip over or maybe they are not suited to carry whatever fuel or liquid they're carrying. Um, is there an emergency plan in place that Del Dot has and, and rehearses in Absolutely. the event of an emergency? Absolutely. Our Transportation Management Center, or TMC, located in, in Smyrna, um, we have that all of, you know, and the interesting part about that, if you recall last year, we had a bee scenario where the, the freight train was transporting bees. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And we actually even had that emergency plan, believe it or not. So um, <laughs> our, our transportation management folks really, uh, they do a fantastic job and, and are prepared, and we do have plans in place in case you know, we have a in case situation. the worst happens. In case the worst, and you know, and we've we've planned for it. It's we have to be prepared for it, and we we are. Uh, you made a decision to scale back the Route 113 bypass project. Was that a money thing or a compromise? Well, actually, in I want to talk just a little bit about this because that is a perfect example of when we go out with a project, especially one of that magnitude, we put all different types of options and scenarios on the table, and then we solicit the public input. And the public input was, hey, we don't want it in this area. We want it smaller. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what we responded to and, and with the smaller project that really got to the same level of service that, that we were initially looking for. So we really rely on that public input. So that's, you know, it's a great thing. So the community input, the community voice was heard in this instance? Oh, absolutely. The 301 bypass, where does that stand? Um, we're still um, working with the federal government. Um, we have been uh, asked to apply for the TIFI loan, which is, again, that's a $400 million project. Um, and if, you know, if we don't get the, uh, the TIFI grant from the federal government, that project will not go. So uh, we're still working on that. It's an extremely complicated process. Um, it requires a lot of information and, and data. We want to make sure that our traffic counts are correct. We want to make sure that you know, the funding scenarios are good. So we should have a go, no-go by the end of the summer on that project. But okay. things are moving forward and public input for that. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's another thing um, I want to make sure that people understand because sometimes, you know, the 301 project, when we were, you know, coming to the preferred alignment, lots of public input, lots of public outreach. But then as we go into the right-of-way phase where we're, you know, we're acquiring the properties and working on the plans and the financing, it's kind of like a lull and people don't hear about it that much. So when we come back around and we're ready to go, we will go out with some additional public outreach. So it's kind of just the way our process works out. As you are finishing out the remaining couple years of Governor Mark Kell's term, how is it going so far? And, and anything you didn't expect uh, as being a newly sworn in Secretary of Transportation? No, the, the good thing is, you know, um, I was the director of DMV for seven years, um, and I had um, come in in an acting capacity in just about every division in Del Dot. So I was really, you know, familiar with the, with the department, and we just have, you know, a stellar leadership team, and you know, 1,500 of the proudest employees I think I've ever I've ever known. Whether it's you know proud of you know the snow removal job that they do, or the mowing that they do, or the you know the bike ped pass that they plan. So it's just it's been a phenomenal experience, and I just you know I, I'm just blessed to to be here. Okay, Jennifer Cohan, Secretary of Delaware's Department of Transportation. Thank you so much for being our first person Absolutely. this week.